My name's Simon Frederick. I'm the director of They've Gotta Have Us, and we're gonna take a first look. And the Academy Award. La La Land. No, there's, there's a mistake. Moonlight, best picture. We are in the middle of a renaissance. By understanding our past, we can better define our present and our future. This moment right now, the pivotal point. I waited a really long time for the moment that I had. We initially had an idea to turn this into a feature-length documentary. Um, it was just we couldn't make it work um, in, in a two-hour, three-hour format. Um, there was just too many stories to tell. Um, so really, we needed to, to turn it into a series uh, in order to give it some chronology. Um, also, to give people, I, I'm a great believer in giving people a break during, um, uh, you know, giving them high moments, low moments, and actually uh, having some form of pace within the documentary so that it takes people on a journey. Uh, and I really didn't feel that, um, although I really, really wanted to make it um, a feature length documentary, um, I think in this instance, um, three one hours, uh, I mean, we, I think, you know, with the material we had, we could have done 12 one hours, really. There are people um, complaining at the moment about um, the Oscars being so white. You know? Uh, and that could equally uh, apply in the UK to BAFTA. Um, and what's happening there is that people are exercising their bias. So um, the film industry is very cliquey. Uh, there are people who operate in groups and cliques and um, basically they call the people that they know. Uh, they, um, they endorse the people that they know. Um, and they endorse the people that they like and the people that look like them. And that's exercising a bias. And in that bias, people speak a certain language. I call it a code. So they speak their own code. What I realized um, when I was interviewing the people that I interviewed, I realized that um, we as black people also speak a code. So if we are talking about um, microaggressions or racism uh, or exclusion um, I may not have been or had this same experience as as the person I am interviewing um, but we have a shared experience now the thing that I learned in making this film is that um, there comes a point where where you're talking about your shared experience and because you know the code you don't actually fully explain um, what it is that you are feeling um, and so to someone who doesn't understand that code they are limited in their understanding of what it is you actually mean and, and that happens a lot with conversations about race and racism uh, white people sometimes feel uh, excluded from the conversation or they don't understand the conversation um, because they how could they understand something that they've never experienced so what I had to do in those interviews was actually um, go past the point of talking code and actually um, continue the conversation where I'm opening the door to a subject so that anyone listening to that conversation can fully understand what was being said. Uh, so that's what I learned. That was deep, right? <laughs> There was only one kind of story that would get made. Thug number two, the slaves, prostitute, the hustle, literate basketball players. <laughs> Stories have been shot and perpetrated and, and told in a way which has distorted the story. You know, it's, um, uh, you know, the indigenous people of this country were here first, it was actually their country. Uh, and Europeans came in and actually stole their country from them. But that's not how the story was told. Yeah. Um, and that's been a continuing theme um, that made me realize that the way that I was being portrayed as a black person on screen 
really didn't make me happy. In fact, um, Harry Belafonte um, in episode one says it really succinctly. He says, as a child, um, he was really unhappy with the depictions that he was seeing of black people on the screen. Um, and I think that, you know, we talk a lot in modern society about mental health issues, but if you are continually seeing images of yourself in the way that it's portrayed that you are worthless, that you are dangerous, that you are um, not really providing any value to society, then that would do something to your mental health as well. Um, so understanding that, um, I think really motivated me um, to, first of all, to uh, tell stories through still images and then realizing that I could tell much bigger stories by creating moving images. We continue to create revolutions in culture um, that have, are becoming the evolution of film. Uh, and in creating those revolutions in evolutions and innovations, uh, what we're doing is we're opening up um, the door to opportunity uh, and the door to discuss their exclusions uh, by, by women, uh, other minorities uh, and, and you know, gender groups um, who also feel that they want to tell their stories as well. So that's what I think will happen is that this evolution will continue to happen and um, you know, bodies like um, the Oscars and the BAFTA. Um, you know, look, nobody wants to hang out with uh, with the stuffy, dusty smelling guy um, who is old and out of touch and boring. Um, and that's where, you know, these institutions will go if they don't open the doors to innovation and, diver uh, and diversity. Um, because basically what will happen is is that uh, innovators always find new places to to to, to realm and uh, you know the one thing about black culture is it will always be cool and uh, you know it will always be revered and everybody wants to hang out where there is something cool my name is Simon Frederick I'm a photographer and filmmaker I've had the privilege of speaking to some of the greatest black artists in cinema. We have evolved and changed cinema forever. And the Oscar goes to Lupita Nyong'o, Mahershala Ali, Jordan Peele. They and other black creatives have forced open the doors of Hollywood. We got to tell our own stories, dude. To give themselves a cinematic voice. It is a long journey to this moment. Even in my dreams, this could not be true. There's a lot of black people that are artists and want to work, and we ain't going to stop period. These are their stories and this is They've Gotta Have Us.